Good morning to all of you, and thank you. Thank you for demonstrating so much interest in your town and the future of your town. En premier lieu, j'aimerais vous tracer le point de départ, une espèce de toile de fond jusqu'à ce jour. Uh, six months into our mandate, which started on November 3rd, uh, 2013, we convened all the residents of the town to a public consultation meeting that took place right here at the community center. And Mrs. Robinson will give you the statistics about that event. But from the information that we gleaned from that meeting, in writing, in face-to-face -face discussions, subsequent emails, letters, we were able to prepare a compendium of those things that we cared most about. In fact, Mark, you have a binder there. This is the binder that contains all of those comments and suggestions. We actually, Ms. Lums went through the whole thing remove the names of all of the people so that to protect their identity and we now have a companion of those suggestions without names. En juin 2014, nous sommes réunis en train de façonner toute l'information dessus. We have many meetings since, mostly on weekends, pretty well exclusively on weekends. Nous avons eu la main heureuse euh, lorsque Ron Larson a visité Larson, les professeurs à temps partiel au John Molson School of Business, s'est offert gracieusement pour agir comme facilitateur et rassembleur des sujets abordés. Council and I are much indebted to Ron for his hard work, his patience, and his uncanny ability to synthesize. There were many other contributors. Long-time residents of Hudson were invited to critically review uh, what was at the very end, draft number six of our strategic plan, and generally gave us, uh, gave our work the thumbs up, while describing it as rather bold and audacious. A density committee uh, was formed, for lack of a better term, and provided very useful input as well. All councillors provided their input throughout. In particular, I would like to single out Mrs. Robinson for coordinating much of the PowerPoint, the tweaking of words, and ensuring that the print version was in sync with the plan, both in French and English. There is also a detailed version of the booklet that you have received today that you can access and download online if you wish. That version with its assumptions and financial projections supports everything that we're presenting here to you today. We do apologize for the delay in presenting the plan, which was originally scheduled to be presented in February, but several obstacles and obstructions that had nothing to do with the plan forced us to reschedule to today. Donc, pourquoi un plan stratégique? Why do we need a strategic plan? I think the simplest analogy I can make is to suggest uh, Christopher Columbus. His marching orders from Queen Isabella was to sail to the Orient and recoup as many jewels and treasures as possible. Did he have a plan? Obviously not. He ended up in North America. In addition, he could probably use the map and a compass. And there are other modern day examples, but I won't get into that. Donc, merci d'être venu à cet événement que je souhaite être historique pour la ville d'Alcine. Our town, our future, can only happen with your help, your council, and the town's administration. 
La présentation devrait durer environ 30 minutes, suivie de questions qui seront strictement sur le plan stratégique. And uh, we would ask you to not ask any questions during the presentation per se. So I would now invite uh, Councillor Goldenberg to paint a picture, as dire as it may look, of our current situation. Come Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's such a pleasure to see so many people out here today to hear what our strategic plan is all about. 
On April 26, 2014, there was a public information session so we could discover what citizens wanted, what the citizens wanted for our town and our future. We were extremely pleased to see you share your comments on such a large and impressive numbers. We see, received over 100 pages of comments, which we read, analyzed, and categorized. From both team administrators and council, thank you. Your comments guided the creation of our strategy you are presented here today. Your comments were the building blocks of the strategy for our town, our future, and they fall into five main categories. 11% were related to having a clear vision. 13% related to maximizing arts and culture. And this is one of our two distinctive pillars. 19% related to the physical layout. And 25% related to our second distinctive future that features our beautiful, natural surroundings. 31% were for sound governance and infrastructure change or upgrades. These five categories created the foundation and pillars of the strategic plan for our town, our future. Good morning. As the mayor said, in the past year and a half, the council, along with the town managers and many volunteers, worked diligently to bring you the strategic plan. We have consulted with the citizens, as well as the powers of the the MRC. The launch of this plan during our 150th celebration marks a new beginning for this great town. It is the first time that Hudson will have a comprehensive vision and strategic plan, complete with financials, to help guide our actions and decisions in the years to come. We are extremely pleased to finally present this plan, Our Town, Our Future. So your vision for the town, which is now our vision for the town, is to become the most desirable place to live and the most inviting village to visit in Canada, which in fact we once were some ten years ago, identified as such and publicized as such, offering an everyday celebration of its arts, its culture, and unique shopping in a beautiful and accessible waterfront setting, surrounded by nature. This is our town, and this is our future. Our strategic vision is our destination. Our strategy and action plan is our map to get us there. The second part of this presentation will go into detail as to how we plan to achieve our strategic mission. This is a very ambitious and large-scale plan. Dedication, hard work, and the implication of everyone, and as Ron pointed out earlier, I mean everyone. Everyone here, everyone who's not here, everyone has to be part of it. That will be required if it's to become a reality. So let's dive into how we will make this happen. The strategic plan proposes 12 deliverables, each assigned to an appropriate pillar or foundation strategy. Each of the 12 deliverables has a detailed action plan behind it with a team responsible, a designated counselor, and administrator, cost targets, and delivery dates. And now, each team leader will present their deliverable. And I would invite now Councilor Best to explain, uh, to go through part of her deliverables and then on to the others. Okay, we look here up on the screen, it's a little bit complicated, but it's pretty much the concern with that right now, because in your moments, you get to see the general layout and that's uh, before all of this will be available. As Ed uh, mentioned, um, essentially this is our strategic plan which has a foundation of government being fair and responsible, then we have our physical layout, and then we have our two pillars. 
the first one being arts and culture, and, that, and the second one being a nature playground. Our first pillar of our strategic plan is that of arts and culture. Well before we were elected as a council, there had been cries for a meeting place for the arts. We were listening then, and we continue to do so after our public consultation. We have gathered input from patrons and artists alike. Our community values both performing and visual arts. Our goal is to construct a marketing plan that will consider location, promotion, and celebration of all the arts. We will strive to establish an arts etude program. We will study ecological solutions to allow locals and tourists alike to travel between points of interest, such as Finnegan's, to the Village Theatre, and to Greenwood, the Centre for Living History. One such solution could be an eco trolley or a bicycle pool cart. We will connect all of the Hudson attractions so that we may experience growth in our business sector. The second pillar highlights our natural environment with our picturesque waterfront location and our unique landscape of forest and farmland. The three deliverables for this pillar are an accessible waterfront, a first-rate hike and bike trail system, and a leading organic micro-farming community. Because our waterfront is not visible from the town centre, we will open up avenues to expose this gem and encourage such waterfront activities as canoe and kayak rentals, perhaps even a lakefront boardwalk with a cafe. Last year, we opened our weekend boat launch to control access and stimulate revenue from non-residents. And in addition, we provide some employment for local youth. Hudson, thanks to many dedicated citizens, already has an amazing network of interconnected trails. We have approximately 12 kilometers already established, and we are in the process of expanding this network with the long-awaited Parkinson Trail. The 2016 budget will most certainly allow for allocating funds to this long overdue project. Along with this extension, there has, been, there has also been interest in connecting trails by foot and bike with our neighbors in Beaubroy, St. Lazare, Vigo. Although we have very limited bike paths at the moment, it is our intention to put paths in place where infrastructure allows. We are also very blessed to have rich farmland at each extremity of our town. The Verge Hudson to the west runs a successful organic apple orchard and honey production farm and is in the forefront of our quest to make Hudson a gastronomical destination for foodies from near and far. It's our town and our future. A physical layout of the town that complements the strategic vision, the focus on the renovated and beautified center, connected to the waterfront, which encourages interesting and unique street level retailers. The celebration of our heritage, offering a balanced housing plan for growth with luxury, single-family, multi-family, and senior housing. The main and Hudson urban and balanced housing plan to support 3% per year population growth, a beautiful village center with blended parking. In the past nine months, presentations and discussions on densification, a hot topic for Hudson, has been well attended. Many options of this issue still have to be defined and clarified, but we will work together to make certain that our needs are heard. <coughs> we have to remember, though, that it will affect less than 4% of our entire area. Our growth target, 3%. It equals 100 units per year for a total population reaching 6,220 and 7,000. The proposed thought is also a contentious issue, and Hudsonites are fearful that with all these proposed changes, the town might lose its character and charm. 40 units per hectare in the proposed thought seems overwhelming, but as you can see on our slide, we already have several buildings built many years ago that have and even surpasses the proposed norms and they blend very well in our landscape. Rest assured 
We will work together to ensure the character and integrity of our town be respected and maintained. In our urban plan guidelines, we want to create a village center that is inviting, conducive to shop in a relaxed atmosphere. To do so, we will limit building heights to 11 meters, 13.5 in the commercial zone. We will implement a look and feel concept maintain storefronts in the village center for retail to make it more attractive to shoppers, create parking to blend in the landscape and encourage foot traffic, a balanced housing plan along population growth for all ages and all in The 11th, the 11th or 12 deliverables is infrastructure. We obviously have to repave and improve all major roads by the year 2020, and where we can, we're going to try to incorporate walking and bike paths if there's nothing over there. We will fix the existing water supply, and we're starting to find, uh, starting a project to find new water. We intend to install water meters in all commercial locations to enable the town to charge and the location to pay for water based on their usage. We also intend to consolidate all town employees in one town hall to become more effective and efficient. Our 12th deliverable, last but not least, is government. Governance, excuse me. Ensure that there's a, an open and fair responsible government in place. Residents expect to be involved in building the future of our town, and they will be. Future decisions will be made within the context of our strategic plan that we're delivering today, and residents will understand where we're coming from and where we're going to. Residents will be advised of decisions made in the future and the rationale for saying. This has been an outline of the 12 deliverables flowing from our pillars and the foundation underlying these pillars. The strategic plan will be delivered in a fiscally responsive manner and includes a comprehensive accompanying financial plan based on conservative assumptions. These plans are all appended to the uh, big binder that will be available on the website. There's detailed financial plans giving the cost of each deliverable, the time of each deliverable, the assumptions behind each, how much the town, town expects to invest or borrow, in all these different deliverables. Um, I, I encourage you to look at these numbers and get back to us with any questions you have. It's very important to note that the town will only look to fund a small percentage of each deliverable and will only advance the funding if and when the pl plan private and other funding is in place. And our critical infrastructure project funding is satisfied. We'll say that again. Nothing happens until our critical infrastructure project funding is satisfied. That's the base of the foundation. Without a strong base, we're not going anywhere. So that base has to be attended to first, and we'll do the other stuff after. These private and other funding initiatives are in various phases of planning and delivery, and will be followed closely by the town administration and by the town council. The financial highlights of this plan are contingent on the financial assumptions, revenues, and expenses unfolding this plan. Now, nothing ever unfolds as planned, so we're going to have to adjust our financial structure as reality happens. Nothing is etched in stone, but the guidelines are there. The intention is that we maintain increases in the residential tax rate to a maximum of the increase in the consumer price index. Same thing is for the business tax rates. We will keep those within the uh, increase of the rate of the CPI. The intention is that debt per resident will decrease by 10% over the period. The intention is to have a disciplined spending management regime tied directly to increases in revenues from other sources other than the residents' taxes. The intention is that this plan will generate an additional $8 million in revenues to local businesses by the year 2020. We estimate that out of that $8 million, by the way, the $8 million doesn't flow directly to the coffers of the town. This, is, this goes to our businesses. 
Uh, we estimate that around half of that will be generated by the additional tourism initiatives that we're undertaking here, and the rest will be provided by current residents and future residents by way of shopping, uh, by way of increased taxes for the new, increased tax collection for the new residents and the new population. The intention is to deliver a sensible, measured, and diversified population growth. The overall intention of the strategic plan is to reduce the heavy tax burden placed on the existing residents of Hudson, that's us, by finding additional and diverse sources of tax revenues by population growth, managed, tourism growth, base spending cuts, and by obtaining or maximizing the subsidies and grants available to a town such as ours. These additional revenues will more than offset the increased spending needed to generate them. Simple, but effective. And now we're going to go over our guiding principles. our center core will have storefront specialty retail, keeping office spaces on second floor when at all possible, and as mentioned in the densification slide, we will limit our population growth to 3% per year, 100 units, to 6,200 by 2020 and 7,200 by 2025. We believe in advantages for residents. Therefore, as Ron said, we will avoid tax increase over consumer price index through prudent financial management, tourists, and private business dollars. Our town, our future. Bonjour. Nous croyons dans un village bilingue. We believe in a bilingual village. Nous croyons en la célébration de notre patrimoine. Donc, nous allons effectuer des visites régulières de patrimoine donc, des, des, des lieux comme Greenwood et maintenir un centre patrimonial dans la ville. Nous croyons en la célébration de nos arts et cultures. Donc, nous allons créer plusieurs lieux de présentation regrouper et mettre en marché tous nos arts sur une même enseigne. Nous allons euh, faire des planifications pour un centre de art et culture. We believe in a balanced and inclusive population. Therefore, we will encourage a housing plan allowing for population growth from all ages and income levels. To do so, we need a variety of housing options, from townhouses to semi-detached dwellings, for first-time buyers or for those who wish to downsize, which can easily be integrated into the existing community. Allow for granny suites and larger homes. Encourage assisted living options for our seniors who want to stay in this community they love and are part of. Health, transportation, and activities for our seniors should be given special attention. Thank you. We believe in protecting and benefiting from our natural environment. Therefore, we will maintain and showcase a world-leading year-round bird sanctuary, Le Michoir. We will encourage as much as possible through community groups such as the Food Collective, and the Agricultural Committee, a micro-farming culture, and a farm-to-table specialty program. We also believe in ensuring the village center remains a nourishing and viable commercial hub. Therefore, we will do the following. Encourage the development of businesses that offer unique shopping and experiences that reflect the town's vision. Preserve and protect street front location within the village center for these types of businesses. 
Our residents will benefit from first-class amenities at an affordable price, partake in numerous arts and culture activities, having some of the best artists and artisans in our town, enjoy a great lifestyle, all this nestled in a small town setting, not far from nearby commercial centers. Hudson would be a go-to destination for tourists with unique shopping and culinary experiences. Friendly, helpful store owners introducing their wares, discovering that original gift you just cannot find in big box stores. Since becoming a fair trade town on May 19, 2015, Hudson has shown its support and willingness in encouraging ethical practices, effort that will certainly bring favorable attention to our great town. Two days ago, September 17, Hudson was presented with Canada's Fair Trade Town of the Year Award, tied with Brandon Manitoba. One of our own, Robert McKinnon, who spearheaded this movement, also won the Fair Trade All-Star Award. Our town, our future. We believe in a sound economic development plan. Therefore, we will maintain tax increases within the CPI increase and fund strategic initiatives only after basic needs are met. We believe in government by the people. Therefore, we will develop long-term strategic plans based on majority input from our citizens, and this will be on an ongoing basis. We will report regularly on progress made towards the strategic plan.
part of the and you have many of your thoughts and ideas as you have had going back to last spring. I guess I, I, I will end up this meeting. I thank you for attending. I'll quote uh, an icon in the 60s who said, don't ask what Hudson can do for you. Rather, ask what we can do for Hudson. Thank you for your attendance.